Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard. Today we have a pretty little box here from Springfield Armory. Let's open it up and check it out. All right, Springfield Armory since 1794 and inside this pretty little box is a nice little pouch that contains a 1911. Not just any 1911, this is the Ronin 1911 and this one is chambered in nine millimeters. So you got this envelope, it's got all your paperwork in there, operation safety manual, stickers, ATF information, and then underneath this little flap right here, you have your lock and you have a couple extra fiber optic replacement pieces for your front sight. So we'll get this closed up. And I have already been in this box and tinkered with it a little bit. I have not shot it yet. But you get this nice little pouch here and inside the pouch is the Ronin. I picked up some American Gunner uh, 9mm Luger 115 grain XTPs. Today we're going to be shooting some probably some Winchester white box or some Blazer brass uh, 115 grain full metal jacket stuff, just target ammo. I did pick up a couple extra magazines with it. It only comes with one, so that's kind of a downside with it, but it is cleared. There is nothing in there. I did pick up the magazines with the slam pad on the bottom of them. That way you can get it up in there. Because this is slightly recessed or flush, there's a little bit of a mag well on there, so you don't want to pinch your hand in there when you go to slam one in, so you just hit the slam pad. Uh, it's just like any other 1911. They, this is a full size 9mm, but unlike a lot of other 1911s, is this is a forged stainless steel lower, a forged carbon steel upper with salt blued finish on it. It's polished on the side there, so the bluing is nice and shiny and reflective. On the top of it, it's probably just bead blasted, kind of a satin finish, but still the same hot salt bluing on it. Uh, skeletonized hammer and trigger. Um, it does not have an ambidextrous safety on it, just the single-sided safety there. And it's, it's just a cool gun. Now, if you're going to carry a 1911, there's, you know, there's two ways to carry it. One with nothing in the chamber, which you would have to rack the slide because it's a single-action firearm. And I don't know if you're going to have enough time to rack the slide should you need it. It's like putting your safety belt on but, or before you have a crash. But the other way to carry it is condition one, locked and cocked. Uh, one loaded in the chamber, the safety on there. There's two safeties on there. You got the manual thumb safety right there, and then you've got the grip safety there. Um, it's a good feeling gun. I like 1911s, and I kind of wanted to get it in a 45, but I already have a 45 1911, so I thought I'm going to try out this. I've heard a lot of good things about it, so I thought I'm going to check out the Ronin in 9mm. Supposedly, they're just as reliable as can be, and just a good looking firearm. Uh, I have not heard anything bad about these. I have not read a single bad review about it. And some of you purists out there are gonna say, well, there's no reason you should not have, it's blasphemy to have a nine millimeter 1911. But for the people who like nine millimeter, and don't like the recoil of a 45, this is a good choice. All right, we're gonna go ahead and strip this thing down. Now it is unloaded. There's nothing in it, no magazine in it. Everything is good and clear. Now the first thing you want to do is this has a barrel bushing in it and it's you won't need it's really nice tolerances in this gun so you won't need a wrench or anything to do it but push your barrel button your button down in there and turn your bushing to the left and hold on to that button there's a spring behind it that's got a little bit of tension on it once you get that out of there set your button to the side go ahead and roll your bushing over to the other side and then you can pull that bushing out of there. Now, next thing you're going to want to do is pull the slide back. There's two notches on there for this, your slide catch. There's one there that is the catch, and there's one that's a takedown position. That little rounded one, you want to get it lined right up with the end of your takedown lever right there. And then from the back side, you can take your finger and push that button out. Once you got it lined up, and your lever pushes up. Go ahead and pull that out, set it to the side. Now you can pull everything right off the front there. Go ahead and take your spring out, your little short guide rod there. When you go to take your barrel out, take your toggle link or your lug right there and pull that, flip it forward in order to pull the barrel out. Now one thing I found with this that is a whole lot easier than the, the old school M1A 1911s, the, the very early ones, is this is easier to get lined up with your hole there when you go to put it back together. Now reassembly, same thing. 
flip that forward, slide that in there. Go ahead and take your barrel or your uh, that piece there, guide rod, and take your spring. Your spring has two different ends on it. One of them is kind of a finished end. The other one is just kind of a cut end. Take that finished end and put it over the end of your guide rod there. And then we'll go ahead and slide this back together. Just line everything back up on there and push it in. And you're gonna to wanna to get your slide back to where your little notch there is over that hole there. And your bushing inside there should pretty much be lined up. Now you're gonna to wanna to be careful when you put this back together. You might be able to see I've got a couple scratches on there because this is typical with all 1911s. If you're not careful when you put this back in, you risk getting those little scratches there. It's not gonna affect the function of it. It just looks bad. But this is a stainless one. It's got kind of a brushed finish on the sides there. I can polish that out. But you wanna take your takedown lever there or your slide catch lever there and make sure it doesn't contact all the way down in there. But you got this little detent right here you gotta push in to get that over and then drop it down inside there. So if you will meet it up with it there and get something to push the end of that detent in, something plastic, non-marring surface, then get it rolled over, make sure your notch is lined up, then you can push it straight down in there. Now once you got that in there, make sure your barrel is in the right position. And you can take your barrel bushing and put it back on there. Get it down in there. Watch your spring, roll it over to the other side there. That way your barrel is locked into position there. Take your barrel button there, or your recoil main recoil spring button, push it down in there, hang on to it, roll your bushing back enough for it to catch on that little ledge there, get your fingers out of the way. You can push it back over, let that button come up, then function check it, make sure everything's good. Make sure everything functions like it should and it's good to go. Now this has got a really a really good trigger. This is a custom shop gun without having to pay custom shop prices. So right now it's ready to fire. So I pull the trigger back and it's not a real long trigger pull and it's not real heavy either. And then reset on it is pretty short and then your take up again is very short. It's got a really nice trigger on it. Like I said, it's a custom shop gun without having to pay custom shop prices on it. The sight picture is pretty good on it there. It is a three dot system with the uh, two white dots in the back there and a fiber optic on the front. Like I said, you can change that front one out. It comes with some pretty long pieces of fiber optic uh, tube there to go in it. And just if you want to change the color or whatever, go for that. Uh, the rear sight on it is uh, it's drift adjustable, but one of the cool things about it is that is a nice iron sight. It's not any plastic junk on there. And the shape of it right there, what that allows you to do is put it on the edge of a counter or something, hook it on something. So if you can only rack the slide one-handed, then you've got something you can hook it on, get it going, and get your next round in the battery and you're ready to fire again. Like I said, it does not have ambidextrous safety on it. That's condition one, locked and cocked. Uh, I do not have a round in the chamber right now, but grip safety is pretty comfortable on there. It's got the little memory bump on it, so you always get it in the same place every time. The extended beaver tail on this thing is really nice because my old uh, original 1911 does not have that, and that hammer has come back and bit me a few times there. You don't have to worry about slide bite. It's pretty far above the, uh, the hand there. So it's not really gonna contact me and that beaver tail keeps the, the fat part of your hand out of the way anyways. Anyways, we're gonna get this thing loaded up. Like I said, I got some Winchester white box I need to get rid of and some blazer brass. We'll get it out on the range, give it a few tries. I finally put me up some new targets and I put a 100 yard rifle target up there. It doesn't matter, a target's a target. But the nice thing about this Ronin 9, 1911 nine millimeter and with any really 1911, they're actually pretty easy to conceal. I just have a light flannel shirt on and with the right holster, just with this light shirt, it's easy to cover it up. Mounted kind of high on the outside the waistband, up high, it's really, it's comfortable. I don't even really notice it's there and it doesn't imprint too much, so it's not too bad. Anyways, we're gonna give it a few shots at the new target, put some holes in that thing and see how it does for accuracy first.
All right, now the Ronin is a nine plus one gun, and I've only got nine in the magazine right now. I did not already chamber one. So in order for me to get one in there ready to go, just pull the slide back, let it fall forward. Now the hammer is cocked and it's ready to go. I'll put the safety on it and you can carry it like that. It's, it's a pretty, there's two safeties on it. So carrying it like this is really probably a little bit safer than a striker fired gun. Uh, it's up to you how you want to carry it. But condition one is what they normally recommend with a 1911, but that's completely up to you. And I'm going to take, a, we'll just do five shots at this target, seven yards, and we'll see how it does for accuracy right out of the box. The only thing I've done to it is cleaned it up, make sure there's no obstructions, make sure everything functions great, and then I'm going to go from there. All right, put the safety on, I'm gonna go ahead and holster it. My first shot was actually right there where it needs to be. Let's go take a peek at it real quick. All right, there's my five shots. My first one was actually right there. So one, two, three, four, five, and I think that's probably the order I did them in too. So accuracy at seven yards is really pretty good. A little shaky and everything, but that's perfectly acceptable for self-defense anyways. I've still got, uh, what? four more rounds in there so I'm just going to do kind of four rounds rapid fire on it then we'll put the silhouette target up all right empty magazine in it empty chamber it locks open on the last round and uh we'll throw another one in there but we're going to put the silhouette target up there so my last four rounds were kind of a little bit to the left I think and still not super fast but really good accuracy all right i don't have any fancy magazine pouches but it's locked open on the last round just take your next magazine push it in slam it in you've got your slide release on the side there now you've got one in there and it's ready to go we're going to take uh, two shots at the silhouette target on the seven yard line and then we'll take two shots at the silhouette target on the 15 yard line All right, just did kind of a double tap in there. Both of those, uh, I am touching the X-ring on this one. The one up there, they're a little bit farther apart. One's touching the X-ring, and one is touching the nine ring. So that doesn't do too bad. Not really rapid fire, but a couple double taps in each one. And uh, it does great. Even at seven to 15 yards, sight acquisition is really easy. Uh, it's kind of a natural point and shoot type thing with this thing. And uh, it, it's just, it's a good gun. All right, let's do five rapid fire headshots on the seven yard target. All right, and all you gotta do is drop the magazine, hit the mag release, slam it in, and you're ready to go again. One, two, three, four, five. Pierce that left ear on this guy. Anyways, that was five rapid fire shots, and it, it does great. At seven yards, it's natural to point, shoot, and go, and it's easy to keep on target with this thing. Uh, I've got another magazine with some rounds in it. We're going to take some more shots at the 15 yard target. I'll move the camera up there, do some headshots on it, and you'll see where they land. Okay, so I went ahead and did all nine shots there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Got four of them right in the head. Some of them over to the left, and that's probably me. Um, the gun is really accurate, I think, anyways. I think one of the things I like better than doing mag dumps is mag changes. So I've got all three magazines. I've only got two rounds in each one. I kind of wish I had a nice little carrier for them, but... Uh, I just got them shoved in my pocket and they kind of slip down a little bit so we'll see how it does anyways they seem to release pretty easily and um, we'll start from an open slide there and see what happens
they're not too bad like i said if i had these in some kind of a holder a mag pouch or something where they were easy to get to it would probably be a little bit easier and if i practiced a lot more it's been a while since i've shot a 1911 and this is a nine millimeter so this is my first nine millimeter 1911 i've shot and traditionally you purists out there are going to say oh a 1911 has to be 45. it doesn't have to be uh nine millimeter seems like a pretty good choice for it so if if you're one of those two types of people and there are two types there are those who like 1911s and those who are wrong but i mean it doesn't have the capacity of some of the newer polymer guns but it's also not a polymer gun it is a quality forged lower forged upper and hammer forged barrel the only parts that are really cast on this are going to be your uh, safety and your um your slide release or slide catch uh, your trigger is, I don't know if they're cast or forged, but they're probably EDM wire cut, maybe, I don't know. Um, but it, this is a good quality gun, and it shoots great. Even those six rounds I did there, I got everything. I was firing at the seven-yard target. I got everything in the target in an effective area, too. So, really, it's a good 1911, and Springfield's been around for a long time. I like it. This is the Ronin, which means a uh, samurai without a master, but um, it, it's available in a couple different configurations too. There's the shorter barrel, the commander, or operator, whatever. But this one has the forged stainless lower. The other ones, I think, have a forged aluminum lower, makes them a little bit lighter, a little easier to carry, but in the right holster, this thing carries well anyways. Anyways, thanks for taking a look at the Springfield Armory Ronin 1911 in 9mm. A good quality gun, nice sights, nice handling, nice feel, really nice tolerances in their manufacturing. And you're not going to get a better quality 1911 for the price. The MSRP is around 8 something. I got this one on sale for about $750, and I, I really like it. It's pretty cool. All right, guys, thanks for taking a look at the Ronin 1911 with me. And if you could, hit this button up here to check out some of my other videos. Hit this button right here to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm going to plank away with it a little bit more because this one's just plain fun. Nice.